Good evening, everyone. It's Gina from Gina K Designs, and welcome to Stampin' Chat. I'm so excited to have all of you here coming in from all over the country and all over the world. It's exciting to see all of you guys, and I want to wish every single one of you a happy International Women's Day. Did you know it was that, Tom? Uh, no. I, I noticed because I didn't see any flowers or anything. <laughs> Happy International Women's Day to all of you. It is, um, it's an exciting day. I've been, I've been on Instagram looking around and on Facebook and I see all these beautiful posts honoring women. And uh, I know that a large majority of the viewers that watch us are women. So happy International Women's Day to all of you today. And I have a quote at the end to honor this wonderful occasion. So today, tonight, it's nighttime, right? It's night. <laughs> so tonight, Tom and I have been going 24 seven. So you can only imagine our days and nights are all running together. Tonight, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to take an old technique that I've done before. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen me do it before. It's the kissing technique. And the kissing technique is really fun to do. It's really a great way to stretch your solid image stamps. So I'm going to show you how to do the kissing technique. And then I'm going to show you a twist on it using stencils. And this really kind of stretches the use of your stencils too. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Now, the stamp set that I'm going to use today is from the new kit. It's the Forever Flowers from the new Forever Flowers kit. That's the stamp set that my daughter Alicia designed. And what I love about using this set for kissing is the fact that it's got the outline stamps and then it's got the solid image stamps that you can stamp inside. Now, another great set to do this technique with is Lisa Hetrick's new set. She's also got some solid stamps and some fill in solid stamps that you can mix and match as well. So if you have either one of those, or if you have either one of those on the way, you'll be able to do this technique. Also, um, just check your stash because we have done some stamps similar to this in the past. Um, but this set just seems to be perfect for it. So let me get it out of the kit here and I'll show it to you. Here it is. This is the Forever Flowers. And you can see it's got the solid stamps and the solid leaves, and then it's got the line art images that go with it. So I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock, and we're going to start with some basic kissing. So if you're new to this technique, the way that you normally would do this is you would mix the solid stamp with some sort of pattern stamp. So I really like our background stamps for these because they're really fun, but you don't have to use background stamps. You can use any small clear stamp that has a little bit of a texture to it or a pattern. This is our um, rose. You know, I don't even know the name of this one. I think it's called a rose floral. But if you look, if you um, search background stamps, you'll be able to find this one. This is we only have a few. This is the rose lace. This is our diagonal stripes, and this is our petite flourish. And these are all really great big background stamps to use for this technique. So I'm gonna start by loading up one of these stamps. I'm gonna do the line art image on the round block here. And then I'm going to do, do the, uh, here's the line, line art image one. I had them in the wrong spots. So the line art image is on the round block and then the solid version of that image is on the square block. So you'll be able to see the difference. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate these techniques for you and a couple different uh, ways to do it. And then we'll pick one together and we'll make a card out of it. Does that sound like a plan? I'm excited about that. All right. So for the line art ones, I want to just show you, you can either do this using a black ink pad or you can do this using a deep color ink pad. So I'm going to use the uh, tranquil teal for my first sample. I'm going to first stamp it in black. Let me find my tidy towel first because I'm going to need to clean up my stamps after each use here. So I'm going to stamp this first using black ink. Okay. And then I just cleaned that with the tidy towel. Then I'm going to use the tranquil teal ink as the line as well. So you can see it both ways. You can tell me which way you like it better too. Okay, so that's a nice deep image there. 
So I've cleaned that so I can use it again later. Now, for the kissing technique, let's start with the Petite Flourish stamp set, I, or background stamp. I love this one for this technique. Um, I'm not gonna back out too much because I definitely want you to be able to see the results closely. So you wanna pick for your solid image stamp, you wanna pick a lighter coordinating color to whatever color you're going to use for your kissing. So in this case, I'm going to use sea glass and I'm going to use tranquil teal. And you always wanna put your darker color onto your um, pattern and you wanna put your lighter color onto your solid stamp. So I'm gonna start with the tranquil teal and I'm going to put that right onto this background stamp. Then I'm going to ink up my solid stamp using the sea glass. And then I'm going to kiss it to the background stamp by touching it on there. And then I'm going to stamp that inside the black line. Now, let me bring that closer. Can you see the detail in that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? It gives you a really, really fun detail. Um, I see Julie said the sound is off. We actually do have sound. So um, maybe just try either coming, going out and coming back in or check to make sure your volume is up. Or if you're watching on YouTube, sometimes when a video starts, mute, uh, YouTube actually has it muted. So just check that and see if you're, make sure you're not muted. Okay, so we're gonna do a second layer here of Tranquil Teal. We need to ink it up again since we pulled that ink off. And now I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm gonna stamp it on the Tranquil Teal line art to see if that is just kind of a nicer, softer look. So again, I'm gonna kiss right onto that stamp, and then I'm going to stamp it into the Tranquil Teal. So which one do you guys like better? Do you like the Tranquil Teal or do you like the black outline? I'll wait and see what you guys think. So while you guys are deciding, I'm going to do another one and show you. The, back, the background stamps are on order. A lot of the products that we have on order right now, some of them are being held until our move is complete. We're moving into our new um, manufacturing facility uh, by April 1st. So some of those products are being held for us and they're being shipped to our new location. So they should all, you know, a lot of things should be coming back in stock around April 1st, April 2nd, that week. Okay, so now you've seen that one. Let's do a pink combination. Okay, so a lot of people like the teal and some like the black outline. Okay, so let's do, I love this one, this rose lace background stamp. I think this one is really fun for kissing. So I'm going to stamp a black one and then I'm going to stamp a passionate pink one because I want to do a pink combination here. So here's a black one and then I got to clean that and then I'm going to use the passionate pink. Yeah, acrylic blocks should be in probably closer to early May. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the passionate pink and we've got the um, the black. Now the complementary color I wanna use is bubblegum pink for this one. So I'm going to ink up this background stamp using some passionate pink. I really like this particular pattern. I didn't think that I would cause it's so big and busy, but it really looks cool. And I'm gonna ink up the solid stamp using the bubblegum. And then I'm gonna kiss it to the rose lace. And then I'm going to stamp it. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So much fun. I love that technique. Now make sure you look through your background stamps. I'm sure you guys have lots of background stamps that would work really well for this technique. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to ink this up with passionate pink. And then I'm going to ink up the solid stamp here. And we're gonna see what it looks like on the passionate pink outline. 
So Luann wants to know, can you also use background uninked to remove the ink, creating a faded pattern? Can you use the background uninked? Oh, well, let's try that. That's a really good idea. We're going to try it, Luann. That's an awesome, awesome idea. So let's give it a try and see what happens. And I think you might even get better color, a better look, if we um, used the darker color, too, for the design. Okay, so we'll stamp this one in Passionate Pink. We're going to try Luann's idea. I think it's a great idea. And let's see. Hmm. So we'll take this solid stamp. We'll stamp the whole thing with Passionate Pink. Okay. And then we'll, we'll touch it to the block in a spot that doesn't have any ink. And then, oh, Luann, will you see this? Look how pretty that looks. You see that? That's a great idea. Courtesy of Luann. I love it. Okay, so now which do you like better here? Do you like the black or do you like the pink on pink? The black is really art deco. I kind of dig how, how you know, cool and vibrant that looks. So, I, you know, both are really cool. So whatever way we decide to go, it's going to look cool. All right, so now I have another one that I want to show you. I'm just going to move this stamp away. I'm not going to clean it because my tidy towel is going to get trashed if I do. What I'm going to do next is, these are some cool ideas here, guys. All right. The next one I'm going to do is a plaid. So I'm going to stamp this in black. And then I'm also going to stamp it in tranquil teal again. Okay. The pink only gets lost, so I'm voting for the black. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, it. I, I do like the idea if you're going to just do it by itself to add at least the pink line around the outside to kind of finish it off rather than just stamping it by itself. But um, I do agree with you. I think that black is very, very striking. Okay, so I'm going to use um, Tranquil Teal again for this next one because this is going to be one of the colors I use. I like Luann's too, Jackie. It's a great idea. Okay. And it might even look better with the lighter color, but it looks pretty cool. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the diagonal stripe. And I like this stamp because this stamp allows me to do either a striped pattern or a plaid pattern, which is really fun. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna ink up part of this background stamp with Tranquil Teal. And then I'm gonna ink up part of it with Lucky Clover. Okay, so Tranquil Teal, Lucky Clover. And now I'm gonna take my solid stamp and I'm gonna stamp it on the Tranquil Teal. Then I'm gonna turn it a quarter turn and I'm gonna stamp it on the Lucky Clover. And then I'm gonna stamp that inside my design. Look at that. Plaid, isn't that fun? That's a fun one. <laughs> you like that one, Tom? Mm -hmm. I like them all. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Let's do it one more time and make sure when you're doing the plaid that, you know, if you're doing more than one flower that you always clean your stamp in between because it's got residue from both colors on it. So we'll stamp this one first this way and then we'll turn it a quarter turn Get the crisscross, and now I'm going to stamp this onto the Tranquil Teal. And I'm doing the two just to show you the difference of the harsh line and the more vibrant black line. So that's a fun way to do it. And of course, you can always just go straight ahead plaid, which would, or diagonal stripe, which would be very cool too. Let's just stamp one like that. You don't have to fill it in with, um, with the same color, you can use a different color. So we'll fill it in with some Lucky Clover. We'll just do a diagonal stripe. Like maybe at Christmas you wanna do like a Christmas flower in a, 
like a candy cane stripe. So that's just the diagonal stripe. You can see what that looks like. So these are really fun, just fun to do. So these are the kissed ones that are done with stamps. Now let's do a couple using stencils and then we'll review them and pick what we like and we'll bang out a few uh, flowers and we'll, we'll turn it into a card. <laughs> Okay. Welcome, everyone. It's so great to see all of you here tonight. I know a lot of you are just coming in. We're doing the kissing technique. And if you missed what we did first, we uh, we used a lighter color and then a darker color on the, um, the rubber background stamp to create patterns inside our flowers. So these are stamps. Now we're going to start with stencils. So the cool thing about using clear stamps with stencils is the clear stamps are very sticky. So the stencils stick to the stamps really easily. So I'm gonna stamp again, you know what? I'm gonna stamp like three of these cause I'm like, I'm doing a couple different patterns here. So I'm gonna do that. And then um, we'll pick some colors. Let's do, um, hmm. Let's do coral wreath. Coral reef will be a fun one. We'll do coral reef. Coral reef's a great color. We'll do, let's do tranquil teal again, because you know me and teal. It's like, I remember one time I looked at my Instagram and every card that I had, like for like five cards in a row was teal. And I was like, I cannot use teal. <laughs> for a long time now. And we'll do the passionate pink again, since these are the colors we have close by. But of course you can do any colors you want. So experiment with different purples and, you know, browns, neutral colors, see what you can come up with. Okay. So now we have all of our outlines done. I can't believe I'm even going to say this, but I'm sweating. It was like 50, what was it today, Tom? 58. 58 degrees today, and I'm sweating. Isn't that stupid? But um, I'm not used to it. My, my blood has gotten thick. Okay, so I chose a few stencils here that I think might work well. And yes, our stencils, we have a lot that are on the way. I just got a, they told me a ship date of March 22nd for stencils, and it usually takes about a week to get. So definitely the first week of April, we should have a lot of stencils back in stock. So the fizzy stencil is one that I think is really fun for this technique. I also think um, festive. This was in our holiday kit. That's a real fun one. You want to do something that's kind of busy and not something that has too big of a pattern. This one, actually, this mega flower, I just said not too big of a pattern. And here's a big pattern. But I like this one because... Um, you know, the, the big part of the pattern is open, which means you get a lot of color on it. If if it was just tiny lines that you were going to get on it, I don't think it would look as good. But I do like this one. So I will do one of the samples. And then Harvest Flourish is another really good one. So if you have any of those stencils or anything similar, you definitely um, will get a fun look. So let's start with this one because the Mega Flower probably seems the most weird. Let's do that one first. Okay, so the cool thing about these stencils or any stencils with clear stamps, like I said, is they do stick very easily to the clear stamp because it's sticky. So just press it on there as if you were, you know, tacking it down with pixie spray or something. And then I'm going to get a, um, a blender brush and I will use some, um, some tranquil teal on this. And I'm going to hold it into place. I mean, I'm not going to rely on the fact that it's going to stay like that. And I'm going to just bounce this color all over the stamp. Tranquil teal. I wouldn't swirl the ink because, um, you know, you see what I just did. You will lose the pattern. You'll kind of move things around. So let's see how this looks. I might have to start over, but we'll see. Okay. You know what I have, I think this is gonna work. So isn't that fun? Now I'm gonna clean it again. And then 
when I clean my stencils on my desktop, I like to just use the tidy towel and just do it over a paper towel because the paper towel will grab anything, you know, that is going to come off on the other side. So now that's nice and clean. The tidy towel does a lot. Okay, so we'll try that again. We'll find another spot. Let's just do it right there. And we'll ink up that blending brush really well so that we don't have to go back and re-ink. Okay. Here we go. So this is a really fun way, another way to stretch your stencils. I love techniques that, you know, are kind of a different way to use something that you that you already have in your collection. So that's pretty fun, huh? <laughs> okay. So now let's try something with the pink. Let me get a pink blending brush. And we'll try a different stencil. I should probably clean this one because stencils stain a little bit if you don't clean them right away. Not that I care that it's stained. I mean, everything of mine is stained. <laughs> Actually, half of my clothes are stained. You know how it is. But it's good to clean them if you can. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll try. Uh, let's try. Let's try fizzy. We'll just do some polka dots on here. Now, you want to find like a good spot. So I want to find a spot that has maybe a few more of the smaller dots in there so I get even more texture, although you might like it with bigger dots. So, you know, pick what you want. Pick a place that you think the pattern is what you want. And then I'm gonna ink this up with lots of passionate pink. And I'm gonna bounce that all over. So I'll be honest with you guys, I, I didn't really practice this. I just had this idea. So I'm really glad it's panning out. <laughs> That's the beauty of live with Gina K. You never know what's gonna happen, right? Okay, look at those cute little polka dots. All right, here we go. Okay. So that is a very fun graphic style. I, I got to say, I'm, I'm really digging that. Now, if you prefer a more two-tone look, more like the kiss look, we'll do it on this one. Okay? So you can stamp it first, solid stamp, with the bubble gum, just to get a nice solid image in there. Then, let me clean this so I don't contaminate things. Okay. Then you can get go back over the same stamp with the dots. Look at me. <laughs> I'm covered with ink. It's the best way to be though, right? It's because my tidy towels are so dirty. I have to throw them in the wash. I like to wash them in the washing machine with really hot water. Don't put them in your dryer, but wash them with really hot water and a little bit of Tide Oh man, they come out so clean and they smell so fresh. It's great. Okay. So then you can add your darker dots on top. There we go. So that's a real fun look. Oh, I am a mess. <laughs> All right, so there's two designs. Let's do one more. And then we have to pick what we want. Um, you know, exactly how we want it to, to look for our card. Boy, I used to have a time up at the top of this, um, this live, and now I don't. I just have to go by your comments that it's around 725. I just have to know. All right, let's try the festive flourish or the festive stencil, not festive flourish. So we'll do one with um, some background ink. And I think Peach Bellini is a great mix for our um, coral reef. So we'll do the first one. We'll try the black one this way this time. Yeah, the dots, you can, that's right. You can never go wrong with polka dots. And I really do like stencils that are not too much of a, of a repetitive pattern because then you can actually, um, you know, you can kind of turn it any way you want. You don't have to worry about how it's gonna go on. 
Okay, so now I need an orange blending brush. So let me grab my orange here. And then once again, I'm gonna find like a flourishy spot for this. Ooh, that's stuck right on there. So that must be where it wants to go. And I'm going to really ink up my coral reef brush really well and get some of that ink on there. Yeah, this is definitely a twist on kissing. Okay. Ooh, I like that. This is pretty already. So we'll get this darker color on here. See that? Isn't that cool? All the different patterns are so much fun. So are you guys starting to decide which color combination, which pattern, and which of these techniques that you like the best? Do you like it with the stamps? Do you like it with the stencils? I'm really digging that one, guys. But I'm going to let you decide. We'll see how many you guys, like what you guys like. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that same spot on this stencil. And then this will just be plain. This will be coral reef on a coral reef outline. Okay, here we go. I like the graphic nature of leaving the white space. All right. So a lot of people are saying they like the polka dots and the polka dots on the black. So look at all these different options that we did. So many to choose from. <laughs> yeah, the coral one's really pretty, definitely. Pink dots, pink dots. Are those stencils sold together? Nope, each of our stencils is an individual stencil, so you can pick whichever one that you want. All right. So people are liking the, the double pink. I wonder how that would look on the with black, with a black outline. Coral and teal. Oh, so a lot of you are like, it doesn't matter. I like them all. So dots always win. Okay. Well, let's do, let's do polka dots, shall we? Shall we try the polka dot one? All right. So let's, I, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to say polka dots. So now I need you guys to tell me, do you like just the plain with the black? Or do you like the pink outline? Black outline or pink outline? Which one of these two? We're going to narrow it down. Because honestly, I know we're always going to get 10,000, you know, opinions. And look at me. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, pink outline. All right, we've got pink outline. Comments are coming in fast and furious here. Black, 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 pink, pink, pink. Okay, plain with the black. Plain with black, plain with black. They're all pretty. Pink. Hmm. Okay. What do you think, Tom? What do you see more of? It's so, it feels like it's so evenly divided. It is. It really is. I feel like I see more black outline. Like a little more black outline. <laughs> Tom's looking at me like, why do you do this? Why don't you just make a card? <laughs> Because I want to know what they like. <laughs> All right. I think we've got more of this than anything. So, okay. How about if I do this? Since a lot of you like the two-tone pink, what if I do the two-tone pink, but I use a black outline? Shall I try it? That's what I'll do. Okay. So it's kind of like a win-win, except nobody wins. <laughs> it's probably not going to look that good. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. So I'm going to do the black outline. Let Tom decide. Oh, that's sweet. Tom, what do you think? Is this going to work? Didn't the last time. It did. <laughs> your, your decision didn't work the last time? That's a bad stamp. I'm going to stamp again. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do that one, and then I'm going to do... Um, because I have to do more than one flower here. So I gotta do this flower. At least we get to see what the different flowers look like too. <laughs> I know, I'm like an eye doctor. That's right, Diane. A or B, one or two, two or three. 
Yes. That is so true. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just stamping some of these single flowers using black ink, as you can see. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna fill them in with a bubble gum. And then we're gonna stencil over that's those same designs using um, passionate pink. Okay, I gotta clean that. Sorry for the squeakiness there. Okay, so bubble gum first. We're gonna stamp them all in bubble gum. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'll add Tom's leaves that we lost. That's a great idea. I love that idea. All right, so we'll start here. By the way, these stamps are really easy to line up. Now I'm gonna say that and I'm gonna screw up the next one because you know that's how life works. But um, they are pretty easy to line up. So don't be afraid of trying that. It's pretty easy to see. Well, I'm glad, you know, like I see some of you are like, well, I decided to try the other one and I like it. So yes, please share in our Facebook group because we want to see what they look like. I want to see what, what all of them look like. So definitely do that. Okay, I'm keeping those stamps close by and then I have one more solid one. I haven't made a pink 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 card in a while well i did with our anniversary card that's true i did make a pink card i feel like i i don't do a lot of pink though i avoid it and i don't know why probably because i'm always thinking teal my two favorite colors are always teal and jelly bean green and i i overuse those colors for sure but i can't help it all right so now we're going to go with the passionate pink we're going to use the polka dots because polka dots never fail and I need that pink blending brush again. Okay, so once again, if you've just joined us, we're going to find a spot that has lots of dots. We can do some big polka dots on some and then small polka dots on the other. Can really mix it up. So I'm really inking this up with lots of passionate pink so I don't have to reload the brush. And get those dots on there. And then we'll peel that off and we'll stamp this first one. Oh, that's cute. Come on, that's cute. Y'all know that's cute. All right, so we're gonna do that again. I wonder if I have to clean it. I'm gonna try to not clean it, but then I have to touch it. So let me get a little piece of paper towel because, you know, my, my fingers aren't inky enough. Okay, there we go. We're giving this a shot. So this is the other big stamp, the big flower, the second big flower. Okay. Oh, how cute. Oh my goodness. This is so cute. Why can't I see? Okay, there we go. That is adorable. Oh, this is fun, guys. You gotta try this. I know you all have stamps in your collection. You have solid stamps and you have stencils. So you can all try this. You don't have to wait for your kit. Although these kit stamps are awesome for the technique, you can still do it and try it and play with what you have while you're waiting for your kit to come. So hang in there. And we are at about 14 business days. I know I saw some comments out there, people wondering when their um, stuff is gonna ship. We're at about 14 business days. We did once again get hit very, very hard on release night. And we appreciate that. Thank you all so much. Okay, there you go. That's cute. Yes, it would be so cute on a cupcake, the icing. Yes, definitely. You know, and even if you end up making masks for, you know, images that aren't solid images, you can always do that. Make a mask, cut around the outside and use the outside of the mask. Um, wrap it around and then lay your stencil on top and stencil the design right in there. Definitely ways to do it for 
even images that aren't too toned like this, but it is really easy doing it this way. Now, like I said, we did find Tom's leaves from that other technique that we did, but I do wanna see what it's gonna look like. Since we've got just a little bit of time here, I do wanna see what it would look like to have some other leaves. So let's just put a couple more leaves in. I'll, uh, I'll stamp these together in black. <laughs> all right yeah so if you ordered on release night there's a chance you already have your order or there's a chance that your order was number 2000 and you know it's going to take a little while still it really depends on what time you ordered and how fast you got your order in but uh we are working on it i'm telling you the the girls in our shipping department have been just cranking. They've been working so hard to try to get all these orders out. So we appreciate it. We really do. Okay. So let's do a two-tone with apple mint and lucky clover. Apple mint is such a pale green. I think it'll be the perfect color for this. And I don't have to use a block quite this big, but I'm going to do it. Oh, the plaid leaves. That's a great idea, Susan. Maybe we should do plaid leaves, polka dots and plaids. I love that idea. Okay. Let's do that. We will do that. Okay, so we just need this plaid stamp again. And we'll go with the Lucky Clover and Tranquil Teal. Let's do it. Little plaid leaves. Because plaids and polka dots together on one card. I mean, remember when like we weren't supposed to mix patterns in fashion? We do it all the time with stamping and I love it. Cute little plaid leaf. Okay, we'll do another one. I'll just move to a different spot here on this stamped background stamp. And we'll add another one right here. That's the wrong leaf. All right. Nobody's paying attention to me. Nobody, you're paying attention to me, but nobody's controlling me. I need a little control. <laughs> I need help. All right, we'll do this one. I only need three leaves anyway. I can always use one of Tom's. <laughs> okay, there we go. That fits. And then we'll use that last one. We'll do this one. I mean, this wouldn't look terrible, but you know. All right, I'm going to find a spot I haven't used yet. And then I'm crisscrossing over on this side. And then stamping. There we go. Okay, so we have plaid leaves and polka dot flowers. So let's get them cut out and let's turn this stuff into a card. <laughs> I'm the teacher. I'm a teacher. Learned a long time ago not to correct. Oh, you know what? Please. I, I appreciate that and that's very respectful, but I don't deserve it because <laughs> I mess up too much. So I really need you guys, especially live. You know, if I was making this into a video, I would have just redone that. But with live, you're live. You don't have a choice. You just got to go with whatever happens and make the best of it. So that's what I'm doing. That is what I'm doing, making the best of it on this International Women's Day. Okay, so let's cut these babies out. So we gotta be a little bit more careful when we cut them out. I'm actually gonna cut the, I'm gonna just get my paper cutter real quick and just separate these two, the leaves from the flowers so I can look straight on and not have to turn it sideways. So yes, I could cut all of these out at one time, but I will be needing the assistance of some purple tape, which I have. Right here, there we go. And if you're just tuning in, my skin is not normally this color, but I've been having fun. So I'm inky. All right, so I'm gonna just tack all these down with a little bit of purple tape so we can cut the flowers out all at once. So I hope you guys are all having nice weather where you are. 
it is so nice in Wisconsin. I always feel like it's just a little gift that's not going to last when we have a nice day in March. It's really too early for us. I mean, we've been known to have snowstorms during Easter in April with, you know, and nobody even bats an eye. We're just used to it. So it feels like a little gift today that we had all of this beautiful weather. Certainly good for moving, right? If we have to move stuff, it's nice to have some nice weather and it's not too cold. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and tape this last one down and then we'll cut them all at one time. All right, got that. We'll send it through the machine. Oh, Denver's getting one to two feet of snow this weekend. Wow, 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 wow. Is Denver the Mile High City? Is that what that's called, the Mile High City? Well, you're really up there. You're a mile up. Okay, so there's my three fun little flowers. Ah, so cute. Yes, thank you. Give, a, give this video a thumbs up if you're on YouTube, if you wouldn't mind. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. I am here two days a week live. I also have, gosh, I don't know, there's got to be close to 800 videos on my YouTube channel. So lots of um, lots of inspiration. If you're new to stamping or you need a refresher for some older techniques, there's a lot on there. Okay, so I'm going to put these down at the same time. And I'm going to take a chance. And I'm going to just try to cut them out without the tape. Just by holding that down. Oh, your birthday's on Easter and it always snows, Roberta. It usually does. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I'm a February baby, so I'm used to snow on my birthday. But yeah, Easter, you never know. Okay, so there's two of the leaves. And then we'll cut one more out. Okay. So I think we're going to use that dot stencil one more time. And we'll do a little bit of stenciling for the background. And then we'll die cut just a couple more things. There we go. I know, brave not using tape and not accurate either. <laughs> They're not accurate. So you'll see that. But I know you guys, you guys are okay with that, right? If it's not perfect, I hope. All right, I'm getting a piece of cardstock here. And I'm just cutting it real quick off to the side. Here we go. So... I'm gonna use this again. Here we go, being brave. Now you know you can always use pixie spray on your stencil, but if you don't wanna use spray, you can always take a little purple tape and just tape it from the back. This way, if you wanna cover the entire piece, you can. It doesn't get in the way. This will just kind of secure it. So I have a gray brush here. I'm gonna use a little gray ink. I'm gonna use soft stone. I don't know why I feel like I just wanted to almost have a texture, not too much color. So I'm inking this up with some soft stone. And then I'm just gonna lightly kind of go, I'm not going to the edge, doing a little heavier in the center, just kind of working my way out more from the center. There we go, I'm kind of just making like an area if that makes sense, just an area that we're gonna use like that. And I did get a little bit of that passionate pink since I didn't actually wash the stencil. So it's got a purpley hue to it, which I don't mind. I think it looks pretty nice. Okay, so I think I'm gonna make this a birthday card because I need more birthday cards than anything coming up. So I think that's what we'll do. And you guys reminded me after I posted my picture of the last card that I forgot to dot the I, the birthday. So um, I'm going to do that tonight with a little embellishment. And Tom, I know I'm gonna go over, but it's all right, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out with the master layouts too. 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes, okay. Can I do it? The, the red thing on the left. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Was that always there? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. See, I'm oblivious. So this is from the Master Layouts 2 die set. So I just cut that out with that nice little stitching around the outside. 
And then I'm going to use the solid one from Master Layouts too. And I've been keeping these in our stencil pockets. They're a nice fit for these Master Layouts. And yes, we do have these on order. So more are coming. And I'm going to need a black piece, but I'm also going to cut out the birthday greeting because I'm trying to, you know, do a couple things at once here. So this is going to be a weird way to do it. But what I'm going to do is with my birthday greeting, I'm going to cut that out first. Cut that out off to the side here a little bit. Got my birthday die and it's blade side up and I'm gonna put my black cardstock on top. So I'm gonna cut that out first. Okay. And I like to do it that way because with the detailed dies, for some reason, they cut better. Wow, that really cut well. It just jumped right out. Look at that. Woohoo. Just kind of poke out the insides there. I like to use a craft pick. The Tim Holtz craft pick is great to use. That's not it. Here it is. So was that your neck, Tom? Mm. <laughs> so if you heard a crack, that was Tom. <laughs> he's, he's sore. He's been working a lot. Okay, so there's my birthday. And now I'm going to, I'm going to use that same piece I'm gonna cut it right there. This way I'm conserving some cardstock here. So I'm gonna cut this out with the Master Layouts 2 larger plain circle, I mean rectangle, ugh. Yeah, actually a gray would be a pretty matte color. You're right, that would be a pretty matte color. But you know me, if you watch my videos for any extended period of time, you know that I really struggle using other colors for my mats than um, black. I just think black pops. Everything pops with black. I, I love it. All right, so I have a huge mess here. I don't even know where my parts are for my card. Here we go. So I'm gonna put that together like that. Now, with these pink flowers, do we wanna use like a bubblegum pink card base? Or do we wanna use a white card base? What do you guys think? Let me see if I have a bubblegum one cut already so we can look at it. Of course I don't. I have passionate pink. Here's passionate pink with the flowers. Do you think that would like make that pop more? Or let me get bubblegum. I have it in my cabinet. I'll be right there. Here it is. Okay. So here's bubblegum. This is all from the kit, right? Well, these cardstock colors are not from the kit. No, I mean the stamps. Oh, all the stamps, all the dyes, everything are from the new Forever Flowers kit. So what do you think of the bubble gum? What do we like better? Do we like the uh, passionate or do... Tom, do you see the troll? Okay, yep, he does. He saw it. <laughs> I always worry like somebody just typed something wrong. You know, they have a typo and they get... Named a troll. We're having a little chat. <laughs> oh, you and the troll? <laughs> okay, so you guys are like bubblegum. Okay. Bubblegum, bubblegum. Yeah, bubblegum is the overall winner here. So we're going to do bubblegum. And I'm thinking that I, I haven't done like a, a card in this orientation. So I was thinking maybe if I did a little cluster of flowers here off to the side and then just had the birthday going across, or I could even line them up kind of going cascading down the card a bit. Let me get that out of there. And then, you know, poke a few leaves through there. I can't pick anything up because my nails are short, that kind of thing. And then add the birthday right here. You guys like that layout? It's just different. It's something that I haven't done for a while. So I think I'll do that and let me cut my bubble gum here. I'm gonna cut it at five and a half inches. This is a, an A2 size card for all my newbies out there. A2 size, you cut it five and a half inches and then you score it at four and a quarter. That's for a book fold 
or a um, horizontal style card. So, you know, you could turn it in either direction. Okay, so there we go. We have our bubble gum. I do like the passionate pink too, I'm not gonna lie, but bubble gum's pretty too. And it's just different, I you know, having it kind of light like that. So what greeting do we want first? Birthday, this is not even the right stamp set. So the birthday stamp set is part of the lace flower set, the birthday. So how about if we do wishing you a happy birthday? That'll be good. Okay, so let's put this together first. Oh, I can't wait to see what color combinations you guys do. Please, please, please share them in our forum over on Facebook, in our group. If you're not a member, join our group. Tom, put that up on the screen so that they can see if they're not a member of our group, what to search. You wanna search this. What did I do to my card base? Let me get a different thing here. Um, so that's the name of our Facebook group. It's Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. It is a moderated group, so we do, you know, we do have to approve you. It's not a public group, it's a private group, but it does keep you safe. Um, and everybody is so supportive in that group. I just love being in there. I love the group. So if you can um, share over there, it would be great. We'd love to see what you do. Be awesome. Okay. Okay, so there's my background. Now I think I will pop the flowers up. So I'll have one going this way and then this going that way and this going this way, like that. Okay, and then I'll tape my leaves down. So we'll have one coming in here. Now, you know what? I'm not gonna pop my flowers. You know why? Because the birthday is gonna kind of go over that. So I am going to actually tape the flowers down right on the card. So I'm gonna, and I'm actually gonna extend it just a little bit on the side there. That'll give me enough room to get my whole birthday greeting in there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's good to have the birthday laying there so you know where you want it. So we'll put that on top and we'll put this one coming this way. And I like extending it just a little bit, like off the edges. I didn't do it on the top, but I like extending a little. Okay, so now we've got some tape here. We'll slide that underneath like that. Then Let's see, we can use this over here. Maybe we'll put this one over here like that. Okay, so you can tell I'm operating in full, I don't know what I'm doing mode. And then this last one we'll just kind of have coming over here. We could even have it coming down like that. Okay, like that, there we go. Okay. Now we'll put our birthday greeting. And again, I don't mind that it overlaps a little bit onto that because now it doesn't matter because it's flat. If I popped any of that up, it might not have laid very well. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little piece of scrap paper here and I'm gonna get my connect glue. This is in my connect glue holder. We've got, I think another 1500 of these coming in very soon. And I just put some on my black piece of cardstock. And I'm just gonna tap this. Some people don't like using their finger. They like to use a sponge or a little brush or something. That's totally fine. You can also use the tip of the Connect glue, but I really just want a very, very light coating of glue. So this is kind of a, an easy way to get it on. Okay, let's move this. All right, it's gonna stick to me. So we'll put that right here. Ooh, I like it going off the edge. 
Okay, so there we go. That's there. Now, we didn't put a dot on the eye on the die because it would have run into that, but you can do something different. You can use an embellishment. So I think I'm going to use a little black heart. Although if I had a polka dot, that would be really cute, but I'm going to use one of our little black heart embellishments. And I will just put a dot right there. And I will use my jewel picker to add that to the birthday. Could have used a rhinestone or something, but you can see what that looks like. It just finishes it off with a little heart on the top. Maybe, maybe a rhinestone would be better because then you'd be able to see it better. I, I don't think you can see it as well. So I'm gonna change my mind. And I'm gonna use a pretty little rhinestone instead because we've got some tiny little ones. These are, I believe, the angel aura rhinestones. I'm gonna use a tiny one. And it'll sparkle when you turn it, so that'll be fun. A little bit more connect glue. And then we'll just add the greeting, which is very terrifying because I made the whole card and didn't add the greeting. And honestly, there are times, there are days where I should do the greeting first because it's just going to be a hot mess. But but you guys are with me. You're supporting me. <laughs> You're supporting my effort. All right. So there we go. There's the little rhinestone on there. You can see it sparkling. Okay, so I'm going to be brave and I'm going to stamp this with an acrylic block just to make everybody a nervous wreck, including myself the most. So I'm going to use wishing you a happy. Of course, I have to pick the longest one, so it's going to be even more important for it to be straight. There we go. I'm going to test stamp it first. I'm going to like practice. I'm going to practice off to the side here. Wishing you a happy. Does that look good? Okay. All right, everybody's holding their breath. But none more than me. Here we go. Wishing you a happy. Ooh. There we go. Whew. That was nerve wracking. <laughs> Thank you all for holding your breath with me. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so terrifying. But you know, that's that's how it goes, right? In stamping. So there's my finished card with using that fun, two fun kissing techniques. Yeah, very fun. All right, now don't don't turn over yet. I gotta find I gotta find my quote here. So I don't want to be looking down at my phone where I stored it. Okay, I found it. All righty. So <laughs> That was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for helping me make my decisions tonight on what colors to use and what uh, which of the different techniques. So it's a lot of fun. And I definitely think you should try it with whatever you have right now in your collection. I know that you're going to make something really fun. All right. So once again, we're celebrating International Women's Day. So I have a quote. I posted this over on Instagram. And I think it's a great, great quote because... One of the things about International Women's Day is the fact that women are all out there today supporting other women. We're sharing each other's social media sites. We're sharing each other's card projects. We're just sending little private messages of encouragement to each other. And it is something that we really should do every day. But especially today on International Women's Day, I think this quote is appropriate. Be the woman who fixes another woman's crown without telling the world it was crooked. I love that. All right, you guys. Well, I will be back on Thursday lunchtime for another live. In the meantime, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, uh, take care of yourselves. I love you all so very much. Mwah! And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.